And, and you know why there's pressure on you, pal? You know why there's pressure on you? Because <laughs> you've shit. never gotten out of the second round. Because last year hey, you couldn't you even come close serious. to Jimmy Butler in the pal. Miami Heat. Pal. Because, oh, because, dude, Jay says because pal. two years ago. Buckle up. Welcome back to Point of Contention. Five topics, five minutes, five points of contention. I'm Zach Harper. We got Andrew Schleck producing. Coming up on the show... KD's back, the play-in race in the Western Conference. Are you buying the Grizzlies? Joel Embiid doesn't want MVP, but he kind of does. And the Wizards are zarding. I also want to welcome those, welcome those of you now watching on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed yet, what the hell's wrong with you? Go subscribe. It's right. It's like one, one of those down there. Just click the thing and you subscribe. And then you get to watch us talk every single week. And don't forget to subscribe to The Bounce, the essential NBA email newsletter for free at theathletic.com slash bounce today, March 30th national folding laundry day. Why that needs a day. I don't know, but Marcus, will you be folding laundry today? Not today. Hell no. Nah. No, I do fold my laundry. Absolutely. What kind of, fo- uh, what kind of folder are you? Are you like an awful one? You just, you're just <laughs> basically rolling it up in a ball and like, it's like you know, one, yeah. two, three, it's a mm-hmm. working stack right here. I, and, uh, uh, I don't trust anyone who's a good folder. Oh, well then anyone who's worked retail is a good folder. Like I could, like I'm a great folder because I worked retail if, and that's just what you had to if do. If you yeah. have that excuse, so it's just, uh, yeah, then sure. It's yeah. muscle memory at this point. But if you haven't worked retail and you can really fold, Oh, That's a serial killer. Yes. Yeah, I want to be that young that young man we see on the meme where he got the little skit set up and he's like boom, boom, boom. Oh, the, the folding board? Yeah, yeah, man. That, that's need... that's that's PEDs. That's cheating, man. You don't need real folders also don't too need much. that board. Also too much. Real folders but don't need that. I'm trying to figure out though, like oh, so you, people you should really, really just hang your stuff. Clothes? Clothes? Exactly. You should really just, just hang your stuff anyway. Yeah. I just hang my stuff. Any t shirt worth a damn is hung up in the in the closet. That's that's just how it is. But you gotta have you gotta fold the t-shirt underneath the t-shirt that's worth a damn. Mm, mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Like wait, those fold the a t-shirt. There's gotta, you gotta have it. You gotta have tears. Yeah, you can't just have your like nipples all out. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. You ain't got these you, problems. So you you wear undershirt. I wear a dry for. I wear yeah, you got, I wear a dry fit shirt underneath my t-shirt. Mm. Unless I'm like it's somewhere hella hot, and I just wear the dry fit shirt. <laughs> All right. The Wish double the t-shirt look. Yeah. In this corner, man that does not wear a t-shirt under the t-shirt. The most braggadocious bean town bench warmer on a college team that went two and 23. He hold writes on, Celtics. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Two and 22. Give us oh, respect. Sorry. sorry, my bad. He, he writes Celtics. He reps Kings. He still believes in, uh, I don't know, who's a white player in the tournament still. I don't know, probably a big dude in, at FAU. Uh, you no, can, Donovan Klingon for UConn. Legit. Oh, he's be- he's good. Yeah, he's that's yeah. gonna be a good matchup. I don't on, think he. Uh, I don't Saturday. think he fits the the whole Aaron Craft narrative, though. I think he's not like, quite. No, yeah. he's not quite as scrappy and gritty. But he's yeah, it <laughs> still fits. <laughs> Ride with him on Peloton at the kid, the god. It's Jay Sacramento King. Jay, who's gonna win the NCAA championship? UConn. Oh yeah, you're a UMass. UConn, or, UConn, UConn is no. I don't even like UConn, but they are far and away the best team left. Like it's not even close. They are the yeah. best team left. San Diego yeah. State's the toughest team. Yeah, you know who? You know who? You know who was so much better? You know who was so much better? Alabama. What happened at home? They got their ass out of there. You just wait. San Diego you just State's wait. Tough. They're tough. No they one. Terrible. No one. They throws, have no skill. But no one tough. throws they're the tough. ball against the rim and then goes and rebounds it like they do. No one is running. Post ups with two seconds left on the shot clock, like they do. Final four, baby. This this has to be the worst final four ever. By far, absolutely by far the worst one ever. Like CBS has to be just puking at the teams that made the final you know, four. I'm at, if it's FAU versus Miami, this is going to be <laughs> no no one outside of <laughs> South Florida is going to care. <laughs> and in this no corner. One. The most versatile media member the Bay Area has ever seen. Three books. Go buy them. Long titles. Just look for the books in the store with the longest titles possible. That's Marcus Thompson's book. He's the bro from Berkeley. The friend from Frisco. Frisco puts the sauce in Sausalito. The media in Alameda. The AO in Vallejo. The Petty in Petaluma. He's the OG from Oakland. It's Marcus S. Thompson. Marcus, who do you have winning the NCAA tournament? Yo, I, Zach, I am all over San, San Diego State. That's they Aztecs, got, baby. That's they what got we not, do. 
They got not one, but two cats from Oakland. Mm-hmm. Like you know, mm-hmm. like we know, we know where to go. We know what's happening. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, these are some thick dudes, by the way. Like that's these, worked well for know, Portland. <laughs> Having a guy from Oakland has gotten Portland a lot of championships. They're football players, man. It, it's football. It's guys who played football yeah, in high like, school, yeah. and then it, they got to college. They're like, well, you can't play on the football team. But yeah. Can you catch a basketball? You, yeah, it's unbelievable. These are some bruising cats, man. They're just running people over. It's oh, literally, great, it's, it's all it's crying. Right. They're, Every they're too rough them. with us. Yeah, they're just it's Wainwrights, and no one's over <laughs> six eight. And the best it's player, Matt, Matt Bradley, is the best player. And it's they don't get going until his bum ass gets taken out of the game. It's like, all right, he screwed up for four minutes. Get him out. All right, now we can play real basketball. That's just the, it's the least skilled team I've seen. That's gonna win this around. tournament, man. This, ain't, this tournament so. ain't about talent. Let's flip it on its head, man. <laughs> just flip it on its head. Like, all right, you want the NIL era? How about Let's this? Let's go. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> Here's some ugly ass <laughs> basketball. All right, banter checked. Schlag, start the clock. Who gets left out? The West playing picture. Becoming slightly more clear with the Jazz losing four in a row, but they're still only a game and a half out of the 10 spot. Dallas is between them at 11. Thunder are at 10. They're a half game behind the Lakers at nine. They're a half game behind the Pelicans at eight, and they're a game behind the Timberwolves at seven. The Warriors just ahead of Minnesota. There are five teams trying to squeeze into four spots. So who's going to be on the outside looking in? Lakers and Thunder have three games left with teams that won't make the postseason. The Wolves have two of those games. The Mavs won. Pelicans, nothing but postseason teams the rest of the way. So, Marcus, who gets left out of the West playing? It's 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 hard not to say the Pelicans, man. I mean, wow. their schedule, their schedule is foul. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's although the it's, Mavs can't beat the Hornets, so that you know. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that you know what? In the spirit of the NCAA tournament, that might be the actual answer, right? Like it's not it's not the, it's not the tough te- it's not the teams who are good you worry about. It's yeah, it's those other teams, but man, I mean they, they they won five in a row and they like it like resuscitated them for a bit. It was a defibrillator, but man, mm-hmm. the schedule is just it's so like I, I where, where's the where's the win? Where's the win at Denver? Mm. Home against the Clippers, home against the Kings, home against the Grizzlies, home against the Knicks at Minnesota. Where's the win? Damn man, yeah, that's tough. Like that, I mean, I mean they might they could get two at home, but like you can't go two and four down the stretch and get in like. Well, I mean, maybe <laughs> you might. I, you might I, I, I'm, so I'm so done. I'm so done. Like expecting anything from the West that you're probably I, right. I guess. And I really hate it. It's annoying. Oh my God. Someone just said, thank you, Utah, for finally losing some games. Well, the entire West is just losing to the Hornets. The whole West is yeah. just losing to the Hornets with, with huge, huge Hornets huge... will be the four seed in the West. <laughs> Implications like how do you lose to the Hornets when you need to win a game to get into the playoffs or the playing tournament? It's tough. I think the I think the Mavs are out though. I think they're out. I just there's something about that team that's just it smells, man. It smells, and they they've got a back to back coming up. I just I just don't don't buy that team. They don't want to make the playing tournament. <laughs> I think they want to go home. Yeah, their their schedule is not incredible, right? Yeah. They, I mean, they got a road trip. They're on a road trip right now. They get Philly, Miami, Atlanta. They 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 might take all those L's, and then they come home for the Kings. But they got the yeah. saving grace of the San Antonio Spurs to close the season. So if you need one, baby, Greg Popovich will deliver. Yeah, if the Kings ever clinch, you know, Kings eh, not clinching <laughs> like, lately, you know. The Kings. It, it will be clinch? funny if if they just if it just takes them like a full week to clinch. Yeah, and they've just they were just on a matter of fact here. thing, right? Yeah, it's like yeah, Steph, caught, in, but... Steph and Jordan Poole caught fire last night in the second half, and they're like, "Come on, man! Like all what we need was doing? New Orleans to win this game, and we get to clinch." <laughs> it ain't happened. It's yeah, the all they had to do was beat the Timberwolves. Yeah, they're they're probably they look pretty good. They look pretty good. Declare that yet? No, I am that, absolutely well, not ready to declare that yet. That they're going to make the plan? I think they probably will make the plan. They're two I'm games certainly up on not guys. ready to declare them a problem. I'm not saying I they're not definitely getting them the a seven. <laughs> look, I, Listen, they're playing really they, well lately. Hey, if they get seven, 
and go play Memphis, who you picking in no, that series? No, I can't do another Memphis Minnesota. Who you series. picking in that? That series, was Jay? so bad last Memphis. year. Memphis, Memphis, Memphis. Yeah, I'm taking Memphis too. I probably that was, Memphis. but it would that be was fun, bad. I did, but I did, it was bad in the best way last year. I that was the that most series. stupidly entertaining series. I didn't look I've at that series seen. and go, you know what the Wolves are missing? The Jazz. Like I didn't look at that series last year and think like that'll fix it. Let's and get the maybe, Jazz and, in the playoffs. And, and maybe that's why it'll work. Oh, do wrongs make a right? Is that what we're saying? <laughs> I don't know, man. It's the Salt Lake is gone, so maybe they got a little edge to them now in Seattle. So Pelicans are the least safe, right? Or Lakers, Thunder. I mean, the Thunder just dropped drop one of the Hornets. They shouldn't have done that. P.J. Washington lit them up. Yeah, I, just yeah. looking at the schedules, I feel like, I mean, the Pelicans, Pelicans are the least Pelicans safe. When you you ran off like that schedule is awful. Yeah, that that's just bad. And then I mean, Dallas doesn't have a great schedule, but also they're just imploding, right? Like so, yeah. <laughs> th- those might be the two least safe teams. And then we get to Oklahoma City, and the question is like, I think they're in that position. It's like, do we really want to make the playoffs though? Like <laughs> that Charlotte game felt like maybe we don't, right? <laughs> maybe maybe we've done enough. Yeah, and now it's like, all right, let's. Let's go get this lottery pick. <laughs> Thunder has we some tough games coming picks. up too. Phoenix, Golden State, Memphis. Memphis could be resting guys by then. That that's the last game of the regular season. But still, yeah, like that ain't easy. No, it's gonna be. I don't know. Game. I just checked the Hornets schedule to see if they have any games left against playing teams in the Western Conference. <laughs> they do not. So <laughs> oh, that's so good. Teams so they might be terrorize safe. the yeah. East. <laughs> right. All right. Time for take two. KD returns. Kevin Durant set to make his return to the lineup. Tonight, well, last night, by the time you're listening to this, for the Phoenix Suns against those Timberwolves, barring any unforeseen layup line slippage, he will finally make his home debut for the Suns. So give Kevin seven games to get acclimated to his teammates before the playoffs. Their remaining schedule, home to the Wolves Wednesday night. They're home to Denver Friday night at OKC on Sunday, home to San Antonio next Tuesday, home to Denver next Thursday at the Lakers, and then home to the Clippers to close out the season. Durant has played three games for the Suns since the trade, 26 points, 69% from the field in those games. All Suns wins before that infamous layup line slip. The Suns currently one loss up on the Clippers for number four in the West. So, Jay, will these seven games be enough to have you comfortably pick the Suns as the West favorite? No. No. I have decided on my West favorite. It is not Phoenix. This is a take I just decided promptly oh, the other good. night. Oh, here we go. Yeah, let's go. There it is. And, let's go. There and it was <laughs> and it was after it Talk was to after, us, kid. Talk to us. <laughs> it was after a brutal loss. So it, after the Warriors blew that game against Minnesota, and Jordan Poole had the turnover on the final possession. That's when I decided the Warriors were back. Mm. Because here's why. Here's why. Pool threw the ball away. Said that too. (laughs) Pool threw the ball away. And you know what happened? The veterans didn't yell at him. Steph pointed at himself. He said, That's my bad. That's my bad. After the game, they asked Clay about Jordan Poole, and he pointed to the champions behind him. He said, He's a huge part of the championship. Nah. They've decided to be a team. Real talk, though. Did you know what he was pointing at? Because I was in there. We like, is there a banner somewhere? (laughs) (laughs) I didn't know what he was pointing at. Did you know? Only because I saw like the <laughs> up close version. Yeah, and I, so like, he just started it was easy pointing behind. I'm like, we, I'm like, what is he pointing at? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Sorry, but, but yeah. seriously, these dudes have been divided all year. Like the veterans versus Jordan Poole has been a thing this year. And after that loss, like which was a pretty crushing loss in the grand scheme of whether they're going to get the six seed, be in the plan, whatever. Yeah. They were cool, and I just thought they're back on the same page. And then the next game, they fall behind by 17. Draymond does all sorts of Draymond stuff. And I think to myself, if they really are back, they are going to come back and have this a second half where they just destroy the Pelicans. Yeah. And you know and what did. happened? Yeah. They lit them up. Steph that was went a off. Pool went Warriors off. half. Yeah. Steph went off. Pool went off. Draymond was incredible defensively. Kamingo was incredible defensively. Mm-hmm. Looney was just unbelievable on, on the boards. I'm I'm buying this team. And obviously the Wiggins thing is a, a big factor 
his absence right now, whether he comes back. But Kaminga, I'm telling you, man, Kaminga is a difference maker when he's locked in. Like he just gives him an energy, some size, some athleticism. I'm 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 in on the Warriors. I'm they they got me. They they've they've caught wow. me. Uh but just Draymond, I know he's skinny, but Brandon Ingram, not the guy. Uh, Brandon Brandon Ingram is ready to go at any point. Brandon Ingram would have gotten more. I don't, I, I don't know, but man. He's he's ready he to go. Trying to, he's ready. I don't think he was trying to go at Brandon Ingram. I just, no? I think, I think he likes Brandon Ingram. Yeah, I, I think a lot. But I'm just saying, like, Brandon Ingram, anytime something's popped off, oh, whether, Brandon with Ingram him or ready. not, he's, nah, ready. he's ready. Like he, he's ready. Yeah, he's ready. That was never going to escalate, though. It was just like a, no, no, a mildly hard foul. It was a mildly hard foul. Like it, it wasn't a big deal. Yeah, I mean, to me, that's just where the league is soft. I mean, that wasn't even a bad foul. Yeah, it was just a little. <laughs> like, it's just like he wasn't in the air or anything. Just a little, like, little shoulder check. Yeah, I, don't, I, uh, I missed that. Marcus, do you believe in the Suns? Are they the team to beat in the West? I know Jay just used that opportunity to talk about the Warriors, but I, I don't. Players. I believe, I believe in KD. It's the rest of them that makes me worried. Like. Mm. <sighs> It's just tough. Like I could see the universe where they come in and KD is just like KD and Devin Booker is Devin Booker, but I just think their problem, especially when you look at the teams they have to get through in the West, is their perimeter defense. They're relying on a lot of Josh Okogi. That's a lot of Josh. Go get De'Aaron Fox. Josh, go get Steph Curry. Josh, go get uh, John Morant. And it's like at some point Josh is gonna need somebody else, <laughs> and they gave away the perimeter defense to get Kevin Durant. So mm. I, I could kind of see that burning them, but the, the best thing they got going for them is it's the Western Conference. Hey, man, and don't sleep on Torrey Craig. Don't sleep on Ish Wainwright. Yeah, I'm sleeping. I'm sleeping on them guard, like, elite, elite NBA guards. Like, it's cool the regular season. But yeah. Like, hey, you get that matchup, it's tough. I, I understand what Jay is talking about with the Warriors, and I do feel like, they they've just got it's got to line up too perfectly like like if they get Phoenix the first round Ooh. and somehow they win that series mm -hmm. what they that, got left for the second one that's tough for the West that's what I'm happens. saying like yeah that's tough like, for the West like it, it's just it, they're gonna play, they're gonna get in the series and like if it's Memphis the first round like now they're playing for like legacy it's gonna be like family lineage right yeah. it's gonna be they're gonna give it all they have and I wonder what they'd have left after that. Right, right, like so that that's the big deal. But well, I mean, but if they knock off one of those teams, how much will they need left yeah, I mean, after that? Honestly, yeah. that's true. Yeah, it's just like, like, all right, we gotta Denver's get to Denver at some chilling. point. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Denver's okay. just gonna like put up on the Ottoman. Like we, they're just Denver, waiting. Sacramento. Like like yeah. who else are they worried about if they get by the Grizzlies in the Suns? Unless you or gotta get one by of them the in the Suns first round. Yeah, and then, and then the Grizzlies, right? Like can you like that one two, just the yeah. emotional toll. Not to mention like I'd half die. With the lack of direct flights to Memphis, but <laughs> yeah, that's the real worry here. That's that's the big concern. I don't. But is there a favorite in the in the West? Is there? Is, uh, it's probably got to be the KD and the Suns. Because yeah, it, I mean, else. it's it's KD and the Suns from the betting odds. I believe. I mean, Denver is just like maybe like Denver might be in this Milwaukee zone from twenty twenty one, right? Where we're just like ah, that team, whatever. And then they finally and then they go together. and win. Yeah, then they finally pull together, and we have to pretend that, that it could absolutely be the case. Yeah. No yeah, question. I mean, because there's no one else. Like, who else it's is there? Cra it's Just crazy. Just for the record, that if that we're happens, at the I knew it was happening. I called it. Oh, we all did. Yeah. Right I now. mean, that's what we're saying right now. Yeah. We called a month We're ago. looking at the the one seed with the reigning two time MVP that has yeah. run away with the West. And we're just like, nope. It's the most they're, disrespected they're number water. one seed the of all one, time. The Bucks <laughs> with the two time reigning MVP, Giannis. That's what happened, right? It's it what is. happened. Like it's set up to repeat history just over there in these uh these old mountains up there. All right, let's take a quick break, fellas. We come back. Our favorite team, the Wizards. Today's show is brought to you by Chime. Visit chime.com slash NBA show for more information. What's the first thing you do when you wake up? Is it checking up on your credit score? Yeah, I didn't think so. Well, at Chime, that's exactly what they do for you. With their secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card, you can start to build credit with your own money. Chime reports your payments to credit bureaus to help you build credit over time. Their members see an increase of 30 points on average. 
All of this with no annual fees, large security deposits, or credit checks to apply. So start your credit journey with Chime. Sign up, only takes two minutes, and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at Chime.com slash MBA show. That's Chime.com slash MBA show. The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by Stride Bank in a pursuant to a license from Visa USA Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply for the secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card. Regular on-time payment history can have a positive impact on your credit score. Impact to score may vary and some user scores may not improve. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply except at MoneyPass ATMs, NA711, or any AllPoint or Visa Plus Alliance ATM. And we're back! Take three. <laughs> Wizards zinging their lottery odds. Tuesday night. Wizards without Bradley Beal, without Kyle Kuzma, absolutely dismantled the Celtics. 130 to 111 with a big night from Chris Dabbs for Zingas. Put up 32, 13, and six. Such a big win. You'd think Wizards fans would be happy, right? Well, not so fast, guys. Wizards are 11th in the East, but two and a half games back of the Bulls. Making the play in not, is not impossible but Wizards fans have been vocal about wanting better lottery positioning, probably because they don't want to end up with another Johnny Davis. Porzingis reacted to his post game with our own Josh Robbins. Quote, honestly, it does make sense because we're in this situation. Of course, still a possibility to make the playoffs, but I understand the fans and their reaction at the end. You can have some luck and draft lower and get good talent. But usually those guys that are the most talented are at the highest picks. So that's why teams do what they do. How are the Wizards as a franchise reacting to this? Well, Josh Robbins and Shamstrani reported Wednesday morning that they are in negotiations to extend Porzingis. The Wizards can offer up to four years and $180 million. Marcus, how much longer can the Wizards remain in NBA purgatory? And in general, those teams are stuck in the 7-12 to 12 range of the draft year after year. What should they do? They should try to win. Like, I feel like it's better for the Wizards to get in the playoffs than to get the 12th pick instead of the one of the most right? entertaining yeah. teams in basketball. <laughs> I'm telling you. I mean, just just get there. Uh, I mean, poor Zingas, has he? He's. I think he's played in one he's... postseason, maybe two. Ooh. Like you're gonna commit to this guy? Get him in the playoffs, him. right? Yeah, get him. he's kind of hooping. Yeah, he's get, been great. Like, yeah. You got players who you like, who you think are good. Get them in the playoffs. That's where you learn about what you got instead mm-hmm. of this. But whole their problem thing. is they're not going to get to the playoffs. They're three games back of a play-in tournament. Well, go down swinging then. It's like, Chicago. It is Chicago. Yeah, it's Chicago, oh, man. Porzingis has played in ten playoff games over two postseasons. Yeah, you committing all that money to him, and you don't know who he is. And like, I, I just feel like you, you just need to. You need to win. Like winners try to win. If you're going to yeah. invest in a team, it helps but your young players. They're not winners. They're not winners. No, I mean, they never have been. No. So they then don't now... commit to any of them and start over. Like, oh, I guess they didn't win the championship in the late seventies. Never have been. But here's the thing: on when when I saw Shams's report Elvin Hayes. that they were in extension talks with Porzingis and want to keep him, and Kyle Kuzma, I was in tears. I was in tears, crying, laughing. Like, why? Didn't you just learn this with Bradley Beal? Like, you need to pick a direction, and your direction can't be just stay in 11th place or 10th place forever. (laughs) At some point, you need to try something else. With the playing tournament, you're upset of... One seed. And you just got to wait like, for 16 years for your king season to here, happen? Like, he, No, here's my thing, though. Here's my thing. If they were like Portland, where where Portland during Dame's prime was like competing in the West, winning playoff series, winning 50 games, I get it. Keep your guy. B- try to build around him. See if you can make some tweaks. They haven't been that. They haven't mm-hmm. won 50 games in like forever. They haven't. Winning Got playoff out of series, he's won like Dave's won like three playoff series, <laughs> like four playoff. He series. still went. To, he went to the Western Conference Finals one year. Yes, Bradley sir. Beal and this core is not going to do anything. And I and just adding, I don't understand. Adding a number twelve pick fixes that. They just drafted Johnny Davis. I don't think they should focus on the draft. Yeah, like, they're not saying. good at that. Like, you got you got. Do you, do you like? Are Kispert? they good at anything? What are they? Do good you at? like Kisper? Do you like Denny? Right? 
do you like like do you like Kisper? Do you like Denny? Do you like get like yeah, say I mean, hey man, I'd, I'd man. rather you get I'd rather you get nine games where you like let me see you try to make this. Let me see you fight. Yo. And, and now you make a decision on dudes instead of I mean you can't punt you you don't get better punting games. Their last five first round picks, Johnny Davis, Corey Kisper, Denny Avdia, Rui Hachimura, Troy Brown. They shouldn't. They shouldn't focus on the draft. That's tough. <laughs> now let's name their last free agent signings. Like let's let's do all their acquisitions because hey man, none of hey, them are. You good. know what? You know who keeps re-upping? Bradley Beal. He's back, Brad, baby. He keeps Brad that. Hey, back. cash me out. Brad is back. Kendrick <laughs> Nunn. There you go. Oh, Delon Wright. Kendrick Nunn. Free agent signing. Boom. Good player. Long right is good, man. He has a nice good backup player, point man. guard. That's a nice backup point good guard. Player, man. Yeah. I'm just Monty I'm Morris. Just saying. Mm-hmm. That's a good train. Monty I'm Morris. Just, hey, that lineup of, of Monty Morris, Bradley Beal, Kyle Kuzma, Chris Tapsworth, Daniel Gafford is good. It's the problem is they don't have anybody else after that. At some point you gotta realize like this isn't worth fighting for. Like just just give it up. It's just, just too just, late. It's too late to do it now, though. Like yeah. if you're gonna do that, you should have been in the yeah. Wimbledon. But first. I'm saying, just yeah. the extension stuff is just like that's comical. No, the, and should, Porzingis has been good. Porzingis yeah. has been good. Like, yeah, no, they should I, definitely I, get back to like the high lottery picks when they got Jan Vesely. <laughs> coming up after Yo, they, the break, they might just be doomed, man. <laughs> They're just doomed. Coming just, up after the break, just send them to the G League to win MVP. And you think about the MVP award. Today's show is brought to you by Chime. Visit Chime.com slash NBA show for more information. What's the first thing you do when you wake up? Is it checking up on your credit score? Yeah, I didn't think so. Well, at Chime, that's exactly what they do for you. With their secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card, you can start to build credit with your own money. Chime reports your payments to credit bureaus to help you build credit over time. Their members see an increase of 30 points on average. All of this with no annual fees, large security deposits, or credit checks to apply. So start your credit journey with Chime. Sign up, only takes two minutes, and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at Chime.com slash NBA show. That's Chime.com slash NBA show. The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by Stride Bank in a pursuant to a license from Visa USA Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply for the secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card. Regular on-time payment history can have a positive impact on your credit score. Impact to score may vary, and some user scores may not improve. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply, except at MoneyPass ATMs, NA711, or any AllPoint or Visa Plus Alliance ATM. Take four! Embiid, not focused on the MVP. Our own Shams Sharani has sat down with Joel Embiid for a feature that dropped on The Athletic this week. In this piece, Embiid told Shams, that he gave advice to Jason Tatum earlier this season on how to handle MVP pressure. Quote, last two years, I feel like I wasn't chasing MVP, but my mind was only thinking about it. That's why even at the beginning of the season, when JT was going off and Boston was on this run, I told JT, if I got any advice for you, don't focus on MVP. Just focus on the right things, which is winning games and dominating. Whatever helps your team win, that's what you should do. And then everything else will take care of itself. The guy who's never been to the finals told the guy who was in the finals. Embiid goes on to say, quote, I'm not a two-time MVP. I've never made first-team All-NBA. I've never won anything. So why is there pressure on me to do something when there are guys that have won a bunch of MVPs and haven't done anything either? Guys. Jay. <laughs> Jay. I don't, I don't, I don't want to win MVP. You know, I, I mean, I, why, why would I want an MVP? I don't want that. Don't, I would, even if they gave it to me, I would give it back. Uh, Jay. What are your thoughts on Embiid's approach? And are we buying that he isn't focused on winning MVP this season? This was the I worst it, look. <laughs> the worst look ever. How yeah. are you out there saying you don't care about the MVP while you're throwing unprovoked shots mm-hmm. at the guy who's won unprovoked? the last two MVPs? It's a race ride about to happen. What do oh. you mean? Oh. Oh. <laughs> unprovoked. Oh. Unprovoked shots at Nikola Jokic. I mean, he he went into the analytics. The analytics. I don't get the analytics. Some of them, some of the worst defenders in the league are number one in analytics. Like, come on, man, just just 
this is such a bad look. If you care about the MVP, then care about it. And just say, I, I'm the best player in the league. I'm better than Jokic. He can't handle me. Like, just be straight up about it. But not naming him and then just and then ducking berating him. the analytics. And then ducking ducking him. By the way, the analytics ducking love stuff. Joel Embiid. I don't understand this thing. Like, analytics love Joel Embiid. He's awesome. Yeah. So you do MVP good. voters. He's been yeah. second two years running. Yeah. He, he, there is no, like, grudge against Joel Embiid. And and you know why there's pressure on you, pal? You know why there's pressure on you? Because <laughs> you've shit. never gotten out of the second round. Because last year hey, you couldn't you even come close serious. to Jimmy Butler in the Miami Heat. Pal. Because, oh, because, dude, Jay says because pal. two years ago. Buckle up. Because Buckle up. two years ago. I don't even remember saying pal. I'm in a nah, rage you right got Because two years ago, you lost to the Hawks. You got beat by the Hawks in the playoffs. You've had now... Jimmy Butler, you've had Al Horford, you've had oh, Ben Simmons when Ben Simmons was good, and you haven't made the conference finals. That's why there's yeah. pressure on you, man. That's why there's pressure on you. Th that interview was pathetic. Just own up to it. You are an amazing player. You are the most dominant player in the world. And just, just... Own up to caring about it. Take shots. Call them by name. If you want to go this route, go it. Mm -hmm. Just lean into it. Don't say you don't care and then take shots at him. That, like that's a, what got me. It's but like it was a, great. We got that, a clip, by it, the way, Shalek. This is, yeah. this whole thing. It was great that Jokic then followed up by being like, oh, I, I oh, just he's think incredible. he's incredible. Yeah. Oh, he's so it good. really was. He's so good. It was yeah. Ted Lasso. Hey, it was so, Ted Lasso. It's it was, so messed up. It was Nate and Ted Lasso. That's the that's, Ted Lasso look, coming right back. That is such good shit I talking, right? Dude, it's like the stories of when people are like, oh, yeah, Tim Duncan is trash talk. Be like, good defense. Oh, you almost got that one. You know, it's so frustrating. That's great. And great response that's, by you. That's Jokic. just top oh, shelf, man. God, that is yeah. top shelf. Oh, man, I love that. He's amazing. He's incredible. Like, because you know what's funny? Like, Denver, like, the organization is like, Super, like, you listen to the broadcast, right? Like, everything is like, Jokic needs to win. Jokic is the MVP, obviously, blah, blah, blah. I got everybody saying it in Denver. But I genuinely believe that Jokic does not give a shit about this award. Like, just like, all right, cool, I want and it. Even, like, even, uh, he even does better. not no, give no, a no, shit. No, 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 no. That is wrong. Even, that is wrong. He no, he because genuinely, I after two, I, I, went, I genuinely think he doesn't give a shit. I, after hearing people say that, I went back and read the story about when the entire Denver organization went to Serbia to present him with his second MVP trophy, and he started crying. And so he absolutely cares about MVPs. Nah, they went to Serbia to present it to him. It was about them coming to Serbia. Yeah, it was the yeah, it was like showing like, the support. Oh, y'all were there. Yeah, were like there. oh wow, you guys came yeah. here. It, like he was just moved that they came out to check out his horses. Like either like, that's way, he though, was like <laughs> if he doesn't care. Or if he really cares, and but this is but he's able to put this like either way, it's incredibly impressive, right? Either if he's way. behind the scenes, if he's got a room full of yeah. like you know, like just propaganda and all this stuff, like, and, yeah. and that's and then he comes out and he does this, he's like, like, oh, he's incredible. Give this dude an Oscar, man. It's yeah, no, incredible. man. Like, this Joel is has no idea what to do, he's like yeah. dying inside, he's gonna <laughs> act like he's not. Meanwhile, Yogi just like, eh. yeah, Yogi's like, yeah, he's good, man. He's like, I don't know. He's like man, that guy's yeah, incredible. Good. That guy should be MVP. Like, he's good. Like, <laughs> oh, he doesn't have an MVP yet. Oh, oh yeah. he didn't win MVP. Not, I don't know, man. He's pretty good. I think he did. You guys should go check that out. <laughs> it's a perfect response by Yogi. Here's a here's the crazy part, like, and you know, I, I I hate this whole conversation about it being like race and all that stuff you race know, war it's very it's very clear like america has this issue but it's, we're talking about mvp but if joel needs to understand this stuff is partly why he doesn't win <laughs> it's because like there is a segment I, it's probably more culture than race where it's like you just like dudes who just go out and play that's part of Jokic's charm Man, that dude go out and play, gets buckets, he wins. He's not talking about it. Meanwhile, Embiid is out here like doing a national tour, mm -hmm. like campaigning, right? Like, I do think part of that works against him. People just want him to be like, yo, man. And then play in the game against him. Like, don't do not do all that and then Bro, not play. It's not like, oh, it didn't go well at first. Yeah, no, 47 yeah. on him. And I understand. He, he killed him. You could be Kill like, I, I, I cook you every time. That was the point where people were like, oh, shit, Embiid's in this MVP thing. Like, that that really, like, kicked open the door. 
But it, this is like, is that like, is this his version of like not going to the combine when mm. dominate you like, yeah. I don't think the, let if, me, that, let, if that let was me the lay, advice, let me that's leave bad you advice. With the last one. Let me leave you with the last time we played. <laughs> no, that's too long ago, man. This is a recency game. Like that's too long ago. That was in January. I do think people like I do think the the show or the shtick of Joel and B works against them, right? Like I do think it's like I like it. I also, but a lot of people don't. A lot of people, yeah, I guess. Like, like a lot of people like this aura of he doesn't say anything. He just go and play. You know, oh, he he's not worried about it when you know Jokic probably does care, but it feels like he does it, and we like that because he doesn't even care. Whereas it's very clear now, Joel and B care. I I don't mind people. I you should want to care about that award. It's the ultimate yeah, individual cool award care. in the regular it's season, cool right? Care. It's great to care, but this like one foot in, one foot out of caring. Like you can't give all of those answers and then tell me you don't care. He got he got asked, "Is this season championship or bust for you?" And then use that question to take shots at Nikola Jokic. Like mm -hmm. it it wasn't even close to to being necessary. He just went out of his way, and he also asked, "Why do I have pressure? I've never won anything. Why the fuck do you think you have pressure? Because you've never won anything. Because you, you lost to the Hawks. That's why you have pressure. Because you lost. Because you lost to the Hawks." If he flipped and said, I don't care about this, I just want to win a championship, I think it'll go over much better with with the voters. Well, Stop that's how you that's how you do it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not not like, well, I don't care about this award. I mean, I mean, you know, I used to care about this award, but I don't care about this award. I mean, I, mean, I really used to care about this award, but now I've I told Jason Tatum I don't care about the award. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, exactly. What's Jason Tatum have to do with this shit. That 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 is hilarious, by the way. Like you going around dishing out MVP advice. I love that. I love that. <laughs> hey, Marcus, uh, let me know if you need some Pulitzer advice. All right, take five. <laughs> let me tell you how to not to cave to the pressure. Hey, I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you guys some Peabody won. Award advice. All right, I got you. <laughs> After following up John Rant's infamous Instagram live by completing a three-game losing streak in early March, the Grizzlies appeared to be in shambles. The word of Lee Corso, not so fast, my friends. Memphis won six of its final seven games during Morant's suspension. After his return, Grizzlies ran up another four straight entering Wednesday night's matchup with the Clippers, which obviously was recording before, which Memphis may or may not have also won. Tune into the box score to find out. Depending on what happened after the recording of this podcast, Marcus, are you buying Memphis as a lurking playoff giant? I do. I mean, they're, <laughs> they're a good team, man. They've been a good team for a while. And mm -hmm. to me, what makes them impressive is if Ja sits out, they literally have an entire other way to play <laughs> and that's effective. And I, to me, that's, that's playoff basketball. You play a team, you know, seven times, you got to be able to find a, a new approach, a new attack. And they have it. Like they can, they can go tempo. They can go big, right? They can throw a front line of, well, they probably can't do it now, but. Steven Adams, you know, uh, uh, JJJ. Back, man. I know that, that's back, the part yeah. that hurt, especially after losing Brandon Clark. Like they could go big, they could go small, they could go fast, they can mm -hmm. shoot, they can get hot. Then they have the like the best penetrator in the game, perhaps in, in John Morant. They just have multiple ways to attack. Mm -hmm. The question is composure, right? Have they learned how to be composed? Have they have they learned how to win? They they didn't show it against Minnesota, and they lost the series against the Warriors because of the lack of it. So I don't know if you can show that in the regular season, right. but for me, that's the question. Like, can they have composure? They're still not a great road team, right? So it's not like it's not yeah. like we get to see that from them. But they they have a lot of likable pieces as long as they have composure. And yes, I'm talking to you, Dylan Brooks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Who's shooting 38% over his last 11 games from three, by the way? Great. He's hot. He's <laughs> That's hot, baby. He's, yeah. he's on but fire. I bet, I bet that lasts. There, there are two developments hey, in hey, Memphis. It, it boosted him to 32% on the season. Ooh, look at that. Jesus. That's good. That's good. <laughs> there are two That's developments in Memphis. <laughs> yeah, for us. Two developments in, in Memphis, I think, could really matter. One is their offense has been invincible 
when Luke Kennard and Desmond Bain mm-hmm. share the court. Like those, those are two of the very best shooters in the world. I tried to tell you about that Luke Kennard acquisition. And you're like, when's he gonna play? You're welcome. He's he's playing, and when he and Bain are on the court, That's their offense becomes yeah. devastating. Not only a lot of shooting, but then you you space. give space yeah. to Ja, uh-huh. and then you have space for Jaron Jackson. Yeah. And that takes me to my Yo, second point. Triple Jaron J's Jackson has leveled up. Yes, he he's good. Up. Yeah. This dude is making plays off the bounce. He is at the end of games, too. Like guys. they're going through him at the end of games. He's great. He has reached another level in the middle of this season. Mm-hmm. And and that could really change them. Like, especially they're playing small and they're killing with small lineups with Jaron Jackson at center. He did foul out of his last game, but prior to that, hadn't fouled out, I think, in like a month. Yeah. So trending up in that direction. And just the offensive improvement there is is he's become mighty at that end of the court, like just really doing a lot. They there, can't, he's, he's incredible, but he's, he, he didn't find out one time, but he's had five fouls in like a third of those games. <laughs> yeah. Like, hey, like he's not yeah. fouling out. He's well, incredible. He gets, to, he gets to finish the game. Yeah, but no, yeah, he gets to finish, but they're, they're he's like Draymond. segments where he's out, yeah. right? Like he's like the Draymond of foul. Like Draymond gets a tech and then he nearly kicks a dude in the face and then, yep. <laughs> then he's screaming at the rest a little more. Yeah. But but he get he gets right to the edge. Jerry right Jackson's to the kinda edge. like that now. Yeah. It's a skill. I mean, he he is like that dude is <clears> tough, <throat> which is why him not being able to stay on the court is a problem. Like he's played like yeah. 30 minutes, like twice in the last 15 games like you can't give like you gotta be able to give me 35 minutes bro like you're 21 years old or something crazy you're an incredible athlete like you gotta be on the floor although so if, if he solves that then they're a problem if he no, solves that that's tough no steven adams triple j gets in foul trouble opens the door for kenny lofton jr please, please give me some kenny lofton. get him on the give court some, man he's a bucket please, he is a please. bucket no offense to Santi Aldama, who I love, who's one of my favorite role players. I need Kenneth Lofton Jr. I need Wendy him on Yama the court, man. Nothing. I, I, think we, I think we, I think we all need Kenneth. We do, man. <laughs> I think we all need. I just want Absolutely. to see him back to the basket in the playoff, baby. And Let's just go putting just, putting defenders in a torture rack, man. Just in the Rod, torture. Roddy rack. and Kenny Lofton next to each other. Woo! That oh, is some man. beef in there. That is some burly boys right there. Boy, all right, it's like a bouncer gang, right? There. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be, I don't know if they'll go deep in the playoffs, but you can't get into that club without their say so. I know that. That's going to do it for this week's point of contention. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. If you're on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. Hit that little subscribe button somewhere somewhere down there. Uh, make Better sure you subscribe, subscribe, pal. Yeah, pal. Yeah, sport. Cut Buddy. the malarkey. Make sure you subscribe to all the podcasts on the Athletic Podcast Network as well. Warriors Plus Minus, anything is potable, down to dunk, no dunks, glue guys, Sixers Beat, and the Bun and Cardigan Show. And I swear to God, if you do not subscribe to The Bounce, Marcus, don't ask what that is. If you don't subscribe to The Bounce, Jay King is coming to your house, and he is going to recite every white player he likes, and there's nothing you can do about it. For Jay King, for Marcus Thompson, for Andrew Slick, I'm Zach Harper. See you next time on Point of Contention.